everyone. Uh, today I would like to talk about our jungle diet. Okay, today I would like to talk about why fruit is so good, how it influences nutrition, health, fitness, and overall flexibility, and um, why humanity could, should consider eating fruit. Okay, so let me get into action. And I prepared a presentation here that begins with a jungle monkey, okay? There is a reason why this orangutan is here and why he's sharing fruit with us. I'll get to it, so trust me. Before we go deeper, before we begin, uh, I would like to take you on a journey, okay? I'd like you to imagine that you grew up in wilderness. Imagine that you never that you were raised by wolves or some other species. Imagine that you never had any culture, any training, and you, nobody taught you how to eat food. You didn't have mom who spoon fed you stuff you didn't like. Uh, you didn't have um, a dad who told you you have to finish this, even you don't want it, you have to leave the plate empty. You didn't have, you didn't go to school, school canteen, you didn't, you didn't discover dining in restaurants, okay? And now, follow the journey with me. Imagine you walk through nature and, and you're very hungry. Are you gonna go and hunt this, this guy? You're really, really hungry right now. Are you gonna face a buffalo? Try to find tools. Uh, you, you would obviously have to know a lot about, know a little bit about hunting, right? Are you going to face them and try to skin them and try to roast them and eat them? Are, I mean, are you salivating when you look at an animal like this? Do you feel like you want to peel off the fur? Yeah, is this really what you're feeling? Or you would rather go and eat something easier? <laughs> okay, I mean, seriously, would you like to face this creature when you are starving, when you're really hungry? When you, when you look into, or, you know, when you look at him, do you feel like, are you salivating? Yeah, ask yourself the question, are you salivating? Would you go and hunt a boar? Would you risk that, God forbid, if it's a mom with babies, she's gonna attack you? Would you go through the trouble of actually skinning that animal, you know, roasting it and then eating, in, in, eating pieces and so on? How, in, I mean, if you're hungry right now, right now, yeah? Are you salivating when you look at look at these guys? Are you salivating when you when you see a bird with feathers? Would you pluck it and 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 it, would you kill it, pluck the feathers out and eat it right now? Is this what your instincts are telling you? Okay? You see, ask these questions, become primitive for a while. Yeah, because that primitive undomesticating, idle, undomesticated feeling is exactly bringing you back to nature. Okay, so for example, you stand at the riverbanks and you see salmon and you're hungry. Are you, is this what you would really like to do? Are you salivating? Would you jump into the river and try to catch them? Probably not because you're not a bear. Bears are great at, at catching fish, okay? And they, have, they, are, they are great at eating it. Naturally, they don't need any tools. You're not a wolf. You're not a predator. You don't have the teeth of a predator. You don't have the, the eyesight, the, the cruelty. It's not in your nature almost, right? To like actually bite into an animal. You don't have the shackles. You don't have the peripheral vision. You don't have the ears that are like radars collecting information. You don't have the claws. And there's many, many things different from you. There's a, like about a list of 100 things different from you. Another thing is that you are sweating and furry animals don't, okay? They, they, have a, they manage their temperature differently than you. Another difference, big difference, is that their digestive system is very short. So when they eat meat, they poop it out very quickly, okay? Your human digestive system is very long, so the food can, has a tendency to rot and petrify in contrast to what, for example, a, a puma would, you know, discharge very quickly, yeah? So what I'm sharing here has been inspired by the book, The 80-10-10 Diet, Dr. Douglas 
Graham is the author, and also there is a reference guide on food combinations and nutrition and the recipe book that comes with it. Dr. Graham is really um, an amazing researcher. He is on the cutting edge of, um, of health and wellness. He basically studies health, yeah? What, you know, what are the ingredients of health? So he says, uh, he proposes a diet with, where it is 80% fruit, 10% of, of plant, 10% uh, of protein, and 10% of fat, okay? So protein, of course, derived from plants. And he's super fit. I mean, does push-ups, like upside down, whatever. He trains Olympic sportsmen also. A lot of athletes now are switching into fruitarian lifestyle. They are not really going for vegan or raw vegan. They're switching into fruit because they know that sugar is, is and carbohydrates power them. Yeah. So this is a raw food pyramid. And um, I mean, look at this. That's that's the that's the pyramid a little bit upside down than the standard American diet pyramid, right? So at the bottom you have fruit, then you have gentle leafy greens and savory fruit, and then at the very very peak a little bit of nuts, seeds, and avocados, because what you would do as a primordial human being without any cultural training. If you were really hungry, you would walk through the countryside, you would look for an orchard, for a garden, and go and pick fruit. That's what you would, you would, you would do. You wouldn't really pick even, you wouldn't pick kale because you're not a rabbit, okay? Or wheatgrass or, or um, carrots, for example, right? You get me? You wouldn't dig it out of the ground. Your mouth is not salivating when you see these vegetables. But when you, if you would see fruit, you would be like, mm, this is yummy. You are naturally, we human beings are naturally, we have a love affair with fruit. Okay. I'll talk about it more. Let me show you this, this image here. Okay. Uh, you have an ape and a human being here. Why am I putting these two guys together and lots of bananas, right? Well, I'm, I'm putting this together is because we human beings are not like wolves or tigers or, or um, pumas. We shouldn't be eating that way, probably, because maybe this is why we have so many diseases, because nowadays humanity is eating like vultures, okay? We human beings are very much like what? Like apes. We have similar fingers, similar ears, and they even have very similar IQs and emotions and their DNA is very similar too. We have very similar teeth, bone structure, digestive system. And, you know, we also build communities just like they do. So, okay, let's look at what do the monkeys eat, right? We know monkey eats bananas, right? Hold on a second. Yeah, monkey eats bananas. That's like almost a stereotype on cartoons. And we know that monkeys are super flexible, super energetic, and they are incredibly intelligent. We know that they can jump high. They're very courageous. They, are, they have a very free, playful spirit, okay? So, you know, consider that, yeah? You are what you eat, yeah? If you eat a cow, right? I mean, you're going to become like that energy, yes? That's why people who eat cows will, will be happy to get stuck in traffic and stand obediently in the line, okay? Research shows that vegans are better drivers, for example. Why? Because we are like plants. Yeah, we weave. We go towards the sun. So we are more flexible. And that's why, you know, when we are stuck in traffic, I'm making a digression here, but when we are stuck in traffic, we'll be more like, Oh, you know, what else is possible, right? We'll be navigating. So monkeys eat fruit. Monkeys nibble on plants. A little bit tiny insects, maybe. Okay. I mean, look at this. If you're into bodybuilding, I would consider, seriously, I would ask the question, what does this dude eat? He's the champion. He's a world bodybuilding champion. He's, the, you know, the strongest animal on the earth. And... The truth is that the strongest animals on the earth are vegan. So elephant, horse, I mean, you name it, yes? 
And um, so a gorilla will again eat a lot of fruit, <laughs> some rooty vegetables. So he will eat some, he will, he, a gorilla will nibble on some plants, but eat a lot of fruit. And then another thing, I mean, I think orangutans are just funny and cool. So if you want to be cool, eat fruit. Yeah, that explains why we're cool here. <laughs> So there is a huge movement now across the world of going back into the source, yeah? Into, you know, what's our jungle diet, actually? Yes, what's the, what's the source diet before we were trained by parents, trained by, by the system, yeah? So consider one thing. If you see a cow, you will probably, if you're hungry, you will see a cow on the field, you will probably not salivate. But if you see a steak presented to you, in a restaurant, spiced up with sauces and you'll smell it, you will be salivating. You see, so culture accustoms you to a certain habit that might not be necessarily your original one and might not be necessarily healthy one. So there is a movement of beautiful women and men eating fruits. This is Freely and this is a fitness model in the United States. Freddy used to look like this here on the left side. She lost weight very quickly, came out of drug addiction and became a bikini model in Australia. And, you know, there's lots of athletes, as I said, waking up to this, to this truth. This lady was pregnant and during her pregnancy, all she ate was fruit, 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 a little bit of veggies, a little bit of nuts, but majority was just fruit, fruit, fruit. Look how gorgeous she is. She appeared on, in Daily Mail and, you know, caused wave of questions. How could you be so risky? Yeah? Well, she gave birth to a perfectly healthy, intelligent baby, which basically the theory of what I'm talking here defies every nutritional theory because all nutritionists, all doctors, especially to pregnant women will tell you, oh my God, you have to eat protein, meat, meat, eggs, peanut butter, blah, blah, blah. right? Men are being told you have to eat a lot of animal prote protein in order to be buff and fit and you know be smart and have great libido and whatever confidence like seriously I mean I look at these guys I don't think there's anything missing here okay and you know I personally know both of these both of these people so why fruit is so good okay well why so now take a look at the picture and do this experiment please do not salivate okay you can scratch yourself you can stretch but do not salivate when you look at this fruit it's hard right because they are just so yummy the colors the structure the texture the smell the smell of apricots the smell of grapefruit the smell of apples and peaches it's just so enticing i mean humanity has a love affair with fruit since Eden, since paradise. And fruit has been forbidden to humanity almost since Eden. So another thing is that fruit has a lot of electrolytes. So it powers your energetic body, your nervous system, your muscles, and it helps you to build your muscle structure. And what happens is that bananas, for example, have more electrolytes than Gatorades. So if you're thinking about you know, powering up your workout or recovery shake and so on. Whew, think raw bananas, water, drop of vanilla, and a little bit and a pinch of mint. And there you go. You have your recovery shake. So fruit is also juicy, right? So if you want to be juicy as a female, eat fruit. And um, fruit, the reason why it's juicy is because it carries water, right? So fruit has already, uh, fruit carries the healthiest water on the planet. If you ask me what is my filter, water filter, of course I have a water filter, right? You can't do without it, but my, my major water filter is fruit because when the fruit is growing on a tree or on a bush, it will already, the, imagine the tree took the, took the water from the soil through its roots, through the trunk, branches, twigs, and basically created a juicy, juicy uh, fruit for you. So all that water has been filtered through all that structure of wood, of structure of tree. 
And that water, that's why it's very pure, it's alkaline, it's, um, it's very, very healthy. Another thing about fruit is that fruit has structure. There's some kind of a divine geometry, some kind of a, some kind of a design going on here that is just like beautiful. And we know that we human beings are very much attracted to symmetry. So we like, we like being in spaces that have you know, beautiful design, in architecture, in buildings that have symmetry. In the same way, when you eat fruit, you nourish yourself with a certain structure. So beauty from inside out, yeah? And I'm sure that one day science will be studying that studying the structure of fruit and how it influences our beauty. And one day, yeah. So um, I eat fruits, but I don't eat seeds. Yeah, seeds, for example, apples. Apples have arsenic inside, other seeds have other poison. Why? Because the fruit wants to protect itself. Yeah, so it wants, it wants the seed to be spitted out or put out very quickly because it wants to be, the, the design of nature is that the seed needs to grow another tree, grow another papaya, grow another mango or fruit or, or strawberries, whatever, yeah? So if you eat seeds, um, what you, you might feel, a lot of times you might feel that you get bloated, you get, you get some action going, like for example, when you eat flax seeds or pumpkin seeds, those are not really fruit, right? Okay, why? Because it's nature. Nature wants to discharge them. So that it wants to give them back to nature, yeah? And see, notice here on the passion fruit in the lower photo, notice how much sunlight there is here, yeah? So fruit carries the energy of sunshine. And we know that sunshine on the earth is the only source of energy on our planet. So if you wanna have energy, eat fruit, yeah? And fruit gets digested and absorbed in a couple seconds in the body. It really, it's, you know, once it lands in your digestive system, zoom, it's very fast distributed. Nutrients are very fast, swiftly distributed in your muscles, in your body, and they nourish your brain. This is a photo of water crystals. I would like to encourage you, I'm sure you're familiar. Uh, Emoto, Mr. Masaru Emoto, he did, research on water, he took drops of water, put intention on them, like labeled the bottles, love, uh, beauty, hate, ugly. And those beautiful words had water created certain crystals when it froze. And here you could see them in the subatomic atom microscope, you can see crystals made out of water. So basically, you know, we human beings are made out of water, okay? And we are not made out of oil, we are not made out of protein, we're actually majority of what, what is in our bodies is water. So if you want to change, if you want to cleanse, you want to shift energy in your body, make sure that the quality of liquids has beautiful structure. Yeah, again, structure. We're talking about certain structure, something, some kind of a geometry, some kind of a design, yes? I'm not a scientist, so I, you know, it's, I leave it up to scientists, but I'm just very curious about this. Okay, and we know that the quality of your blood, when your blood is alkaline, you're healthy. When your blood gets acidic, you, you get sluggish. I mean, the blood gets sluggish, you're tired, constipated, bloated, and eventually sick, yes? Because you create a bed. What happens is the acidic blood and the tissue, the pus uh, that, that accumulates around the tissues create a bed for the bad bacteria to settle in to enter you, yeah? So if your blood is alkaline, you can walk among the, the, the disease and theoretically you should not get any disease whatsoever because no virus, no bacteria can survive in alkaline environment. And in acidic, yes, they can, okay? That's where, that's where you know, viruses and microbes and bacteria thrive. So now let me, talk about, and let me talk about nuts and seeds because this is a very big question. Well, I am avoiding fat completely, okay? In everything, in everything that I eat, I'm, I'm doing my best to just, you know, eat more fruit, avoid fat, yeah? Why? Think about it this way. If you are, let's say, if you are walking through the jungle or through a forest and you are so hungry, okay? 
are you gonna stand by walnut tree, crack all the walnuts and crush them and, and, and eat them? I mean, if you eat a pound, which, you know, I admire your patience that you actually managed to actually, you know, you have enough patience to crack all of this. But if you eat a pound, you're gonna feel like you have a rot in your stomach, yeah? So this is why we human beings are not designed to eat a lot of nuts. We can nibble here and there, because if you would walk through the jungle, you would go, you would come to macadamia tree. I remember my son, once he discovered macadamia tree and I said, oh, go have some, yeah? So he grabbed one, he cracked it. Oh, honey, I got nut. I look at this, I said, eat it. So he ate it and then he said, oh, let me do another one. He cracked another one, woohoo, I got another one. But the, the second one was a little bit harder for him. So I said, do you wanna do another one? So he tried, tried, let me, I'm done, okay? And he moved on to lychee tree, which is full of, you know, beautiful, yummy red fruit. He, he climbed around and he collected a whole bunch, yeah? Basically, ladies and gentlemen, there is no trees with peanut butter jar. Sorry, they haven't invented them yet, okay? There's no trees with almond butter, with uh, coconut oil, you know? There's, like, <laughs> there's, none of that exists, yeah? So. This is a product of culture. The same way superfoods. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen dehydrated goji berries in nature? Okay. Majority of superfoods, and right now people have hype, crazy hype about superfoods. I use them in a very tiny amount. Seriously, they are not the essence of my health. And they are more, I would say, this is like a raw gourmet diet. If you really want to introduce superfoods into your diet then it's gourmet, then you, you behave like aristocracy, basically. I know a lot of raw foodists who blow all their paycheck on getting the latest discovery of a certain health guru or whatever. They spend a ton of money, they, they get you know, these seeds, those seeds, nuts and so on. And then they, they are constipated and they have acid reflux, okay? And supposedly raw vegan diet should be like the best. I'm like, yeah, but not this one, okay? Whatever you eat that is dehydrated will dehydrate you because dehydrated food will need to take water out of your own body in order to be decomposed and absorbed, okay? The same way raw cacao, raw chocolate, I recommended it to you as a crutch if you are craving coffee, yes? You can add some raw cacao, make a smoothie, but really not as a lifestyle, okay? So, you know, if you, if you are craving, if you are craving coffee, you can use raw cacao, but just as well, if you have any addictions whatsoever, you might simply just eat fruit, okay? And this is what many of my friends are, are recommending who are fruitarian. They just say, just stuff your, yourself with fruit if you're addicted to anything. And then when your body, when your tummy is full, you can't, you're not hungry anymore. You're not craving anything. You can't have anything more, okay? So just go shovel bananas, shovel bananas, yeah? And that's like the best method also to detoxify kids. You just give them a lot of fruit and they will just, they will be going to the bathroom and after a while, they cleanse very quickly, yeah? So the keys to food combining. Well, number one thing, for me, the idea of food combining and recipes and so on is kind of strange, right? Why? Because if you, again, if you go back to that metaphor that you're walking in the wilderness and you're undomesticated and you wanna, you know, you, let's say you're hungry, you, you enter a garden, okay? You see tomatoes and red peppers, uh, red bell peppers and cucumbers. Are you gonna sit down and make a salad? Or are you just gonna nibble? You will just your eyes will gravitate gravitate to exactly where you are attracted most to the to the fruit, the one that looks most juicy, most yummy, smells the best for you, and you're gonna eat. You will eat one, you will eat another one, you will let's say tomatoes, yeah. You're gonna just go mono meals, go on tomatoes, and then from time to time you feel like okay, let me taste the red red pep, red bell pepper. Like something crunchy, yeah. So you're gonna literally behave like a monkey when it comes to food. That's why people are asking me, "Hey, have you ever wrote? Have you ever written a cookbook? When are you gonna write a cookbook or recipe book?" And I'm like, 
yeah, I shared some recipes, okay. But mm, the major principle here is if you want to eat, if you want to be really healthy, super healthy, simplify your diet. It's not made about making recipes. It's about finding sim simplicity. And so, for example, in nature, you would eat mono meals, and then your digestion, your digestion is the fastest, yeah, the swiftest, because you're not making it too complicated. If you really want to make a gourmet meal on fruit, you can. And those are there are some sub acid fruit, there are some sweet fruits, there are some acidic fruit. And basically, remember one thing: acidic fruit do not combine together with sweet fruit. Yeah. So acidic fruits. When I say acidic, that means they are sour. That means that doesn't mean they are acidic in pH. They are just sour fruits. Sour fruits do not combine with sweet fruits. It's almost like your instinct. Yeah. You're not gonna combine. Uh, I mean, yeah, not exactly instinctual because our instincts are gone practically. But you will need to learn this because if you combine them wrong, you might feel bloated, you might feel, you know, different reactions in the body. Still, your body will process this fine, okay? So it's not like you poisoned yourself. It's just that different enzymes are secreted with those foods, with those fruits. Okay, melons. Melons love to be eaten by themselves. They're very generous, especially watermelon, right? Do you eat watermelon? It expands in the tummy. So again, food combining here, have a look. Yeah. Watermelon, eat on its own. Orange juice, drink on its own. Water, drink on its own. Acid fruit, subacid fruit, combine well. Subacid fruit and acidic fruit combine well. Greens go everywhere, okay? Sweet fruit combines ni nice with sweet pots like carrot, for example, if you choose to eat it. And well combined is veggies, non-sweet fruit. You choose avocados and combine them with veggies and, and savory fruits, sprouts. I personally do not eat sprouts. I don't crave them. I don't, when I look at them, I don't find them very, you know, not salivating. And no animal in nature really eats sprouts. Okay, think about that. Do you know why? Because if animals would eat sprouts, no plants would grow. Okay, something to think about, right? If animals would eat sprouts, we would not have forests. Okay, durian, eat alone. Yeah. So before I, I get close to landing, I just wanted to ask you, because I know some of you are still asking, okay, Vita, I mean, this is not, okay. <laughs> And what about meat? Yeah, can we eat meat and so on? Well, my answer is yes, you can. You're a free being. Just like from the beginning, I said, you 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 are not domesticated. So go try things and see what happens, right? See how your body feels. Don't trust me. Trust your body. Okay. Use your own judgment here. Before you before I finish, I just wanted to ask you: Are these natural species? Have you ever seen a natural species that is natural natural species like this that will be obedient to human being that will give you its milk have you ever seen a rooster a chicken in nature in wilderness have you ever seen a pig in nature okay you know that these animals are similar like to the animals that are like the the, the buffalo or the the whatever pheasant or the boar that i showed you before right? But yet, these animals surrender to human beings. So if you consume them, you're going to surrender to a farmer. You're going to, you're going to have a, you will, it will be okay for you to have a feed that will feed you and to have a hand that will feed you and a hand that will kill you later. Okay. And there's many theories. And I think that there's something going on, something fishy about these, the way these species appeared. There is a theory that these, these three species have been engineered by crossbreeding in 16th century so that massive, you know, traditional farming would be developed and more successful. Yeah, obviously, you know, the more you can, the more you can set, uh, you, the more submissive a domestic animal is, the, the easier it is for the farmer, right? And for the mass production. 
The same way, do you ever see in nature, have you ever seen a species of salmon that is that eats corn? I mean, those are salmon farms. They are, they are, fed, they are fed genetically modified corn. I mean, seriously, show me a fish that eats corn. How? It would have to jump out of the, of the, of the water, walk to, you know, go to Utah somewhere and, you know, farm for corn. It's not going to happen, right? The same way cows don't eat corn, okay? Naturally, cows are not eating corn. Chickens, naturally, are not eating corn, okay? They'll eat bugs, they'll eat some grains, but they will not be, you know, they'll eat some worms. They are not going to eat some, they are not going to eat corn. Well, the reason why I'm talking about corn is that in 1913, corn was 100% farmer owned. Nowadays, 2013, corn is 95% corporation owned. So welcome to your bright biotech future, yes? The same thing with soy. All right, natural corn, which you can eat raw if you crave it, if you like it. I sometimes eat raw corn. It's very yummy. My son loves it. You, you just take raw corn, cough, and bite it, yeah? Gen and versus genetically mo modified corn here below, yeah? Corn, when it's genetically grown, it's, it's sprayed by a chemical that has been listed on, by World Health Organization as a suspected carcinogen. I mean, suspected, that's, you know, huge word already. Kudos to whoever passed it. This actually, this chemical glyphosate is being withdrawn from major, major stores in Europe. Europe is banned in France, for example. In the United States, it's so popular that drones have just been approved to fly over fields with this. And it is actually, um, the, the ingredients of this chemical are very, very similar to Agent Orange, what destroyed the fields and health of people in Vietnam. So this is genetic, th those are rats fed genetically modified corn. So this is, those are animals fed for two years in a secret laboratory experiment of Professor Salieri. You can Google this, you can find it online, you can see a video. Scientists are showing you those rats have developed cancers, cancer tumors bigger than their heads. All those animals ended up being infertile and all of them were very, very stupid, much less, you know, different than the different than the animals that were eating organic corn, yeah? So pretty much this is what I would like to share and have no illusions. People who eat, raw, people who eat fruit enjoy a sense of Eden, a sense of, you know, a sense of abundance, yeah? And you also don't, don't need to eat that much, yeah? Because the nutrition that is there feeds you on so many levels, yeah? So if you're like, you know, if you're thinking, if you're on a budget, okay, if you want to save money, well, that's the best way to save money is to get, to get raw organic fruit and go middle and juice and chew it very well in your mouth, yeah? And the last question that I often get is, okay, does the food, does the fruit have to be organic, yeah? And, um, well, fruit is actually the easiest to assimilate. So uh, it, will, it will come in and it will come out very quickly. So if you are on a budget and you, are, you cannot you really believe you cannot afford organic fruit, then get fruit that you can afford and, and go and eat, continuously eat that fruit. And what happens is that it will, it will leave your body very quickly together with all these chemicals that are inside. Yeah, That's, that's what Anthony said, who is a who is a friend of mine, an athlete who is running for miles just on organic fruit. And um, I, of, of course, I personally, I love organics. I'm very big on, on supporting organic agriculture. I do not really trust the system in any fashion when it comes to food. I believe that there's a lot of manipulations going on also with the, with the labeling and corporations, food companies that have the label actually. What I do is that I go to an I go to a farmer's market and I develop a relationship with the farmer. I look straight, not the employees of the farmer. I want to get to know the farmer, the owner of the farm, or their daughter, their, 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 their son. 
I look them straight in the eye. I ask them, is your food organic? Then I want to see a certificate though, you know, really, I want to look into the eyes. I want to see passion about organic food in, in the heart of that person. I want to feel it. Also, what I'm using is that ever since I healed, ever since I healed, I, I walk into a farmer's market and I can feel certain fruits, certain, you know, certain veggies basically call on to me. It's almost like, like my body has become a magnet for them. Or I go, I, I just let my hand be the, the source of information. I just swing my hand over the fruit and I feel if they're organic or not. Yes. So, I mean, you have more capacity than you give yourself credit for. Yes, you have intuitions, you have instinct, you have intuition, you have instinct. And last thing, when you eat fruit and it, you sense some kind of chemicals in it, your body should be clean enough to give you the signal and, and warn you. Yeah, so that's, that's all. And I just wanted to say thank you so much and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.